Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back. Jared Roboski here with CMG Financial. I'm super excited about today's video. If you saw the previous two videos, um, the first one was called The Basics. Then we went through The Hunt. And now this one's called The Find. And uh, I've just found a property I'm under contract. Uh, loans already approved. And I'm smooth sailing, just waiting for closing. So I'm going to walk you through exactly how I do this and how I find them and everything and then calculate, getting set up, all that. So let's jump right in. Today's discussion is going to cover how we identify the property, how we identify value, negotiation with the seller, design the property, create a checklist, and get ready for your listing. So identify the property, you know, you got to identify the property you want to buy. You're going to make an offer, you're going to negotiate, and like I said before, begin with the end in mind. Always begin with the end in mind. So first, we want to identify value. And the ways we identify value is, first, make sure you connect with a realtor. Because a realtor can see information that you cannot. Um, I can't pull this data, you can't pull this data unless you have access to the MLS. So you need to get with a realtor first of all. And then I start doing a lot of research on these websites. Um, I prefer HAR, that's my local listing website, um, but Realtor.com, Zillow, um, all of these, you want to have your realtor complete a CMA. So what I'm noticing when I look at HAR, Realtors.com, Zillow, properties are sitting. Just like I said they would be in my previous videos. If you if you watch my videos in November, December, I told you that the best time to buy a property will be over these next few months and that I would execute in these next few months. Uh, I'm a man of my word and I listen to my advice. And I'm telling you, these are when the deal's made. So this property I found, here's a picture of it. Um, I can tell you right now, this type of open floor plan, high ceilings, um, and this property was way below my budget. So uh, that was amazing. And it's going to allow me to buy another property this year. So we might buy another one right after this. So um, that's why right now is such a great time to buy. This property would have had 10, 20 offers on it. And I probably would have had to go 20 to $50,000 over the asking price to get it. Instead, we got $11,000 under the asking price plus $5,000 in closing costs, right? And I, and I eased into it. It was easy. I didn't have any pressure like, oh, I better hurry up and get my offer in because there's 20 other people looking at this house. That's not the market we're in right now. So uh, best time to buy a house is now. It's a lot easier to find exactly what you're looking for. And you can negotiate closing costs and price reductions. So uh, check it out. Uh, get pre-approved. I'd be happy to help you do that. So have your realtor complete a CMA. Comparative market analysis is what that is. That's going to tell you what homes have sold for recently in your area. Now, these CMAs can go back six months, 12 months. I don't care about what happened six to 12 months ago. All I care about in this market, because it's so fast moving, is what sold in the last 30 to 60 days. That's what I'm really focusing on. And that's going to tell you where the current values are and where they're trending. Look at a bunch of houses that you like and look at them and watch them, uh, heart that property and put them on your favorites in your watch list and watch these prices come down. There's another property I'm watching in Galveston. I told my wife about it, uh, I don't know, two months ago. And I said, watch it, watch uh, if this property drops $100,000, uh, I might be interested. The list price was $799. Just checked a couple days ago, they dropped the price to $699. It's been on the market over 100 days, still sitting there. If I showed you this property, you would be blown away at why is this property still on the market. So what's happening right now is uh, fear-driven and emotional sales, right? So people are, are trying to hurry up and, and uh, de-risk or unload properties out of their portfolio. Also, what happened in 2021 is a bunch of new builders got into the business thinking that they could become developers and builders and all this stuff, high ambitions. And then what happened? The market turned. Uh, they didn't, there's not as much profit margin built into the house as they thought. And, and maybe they just want to get out now. And they're just like, oh, we need to hurry up and sell before uh, we lose any money. Right. So uh, it's just a good market to buy in because of all those reasons. Right. 
So when you identify value, I want to know how many days are on the market. That's going to tell me how beat up is this seller? How, how exhausted are they? Okay. Um, are there other offers? Most likely there aren't right now. Uh, prepare a negotiation plan based on your CMA and what you see in the area. Prepare your negotiation plan and then start negotiating. Time to get that deal. Now, negotiation is a key part and you got to be fair when you're negotiating, but also um, you want to you want to win. Um, buyers have been getting beat up for the last two years. It's our turn to win. Um, so buyers get out there and win the deal. The sellers are not in the driver's seat anymore. There's a hundred houses that look just like the one you're looking at. Trust me, there are. There's a lot of good houses. And if it's not on the market yet, it's probably coming on the market in the next few weeks. So be patient. Um, negotiation. Know your current market atmosphere. Right now, we're in a buyer's market. Use that. Use your knowledge to negotiate the best value, right? Then um, you can negotiate a price reduction. I will tell you every $20,000 off price will save you about $140 a month at the current rates. So negotiating $20,000 off saves you $140 a month. You can negotiate closing costs to be paid as well. So you can get a chunk of your closing costs, have the seller buy down your interest rate. That's what I used the $5,000 in seller contributions that I just got. I used it to buy down my interest rate. Uh, that way I have a lower monthly payment. Um, you can negotiate items in the home to remain. Um, so in vacation destinations, a lot of the houses will come with furniture. Um, in this particular house that I'm buying, all I'm getting is the uh, refrigerator. I might get washer and dryer too. We're talking about that. But either way, uh, we asked for all the appliances. Um, we got some of them, right? And it, it, of course, they're not going to take out the uh, dishwasher, built-in microwave, oven stove, stuff like that, right? But ask for more. I think it's always good to ask for more right now, especially um, there's nobody else offering on the house. You are most likely. And if there is, um, don't fall in love yet, right? And uh, here's, a, here's a big piece right here about negotiation. And a lot of people, when they get looking at houses, houses are beautiful. So they, they pull you in, right? And then you get that fear of missing out. Don't do that. Um, it's a business decision, right? Uh, even if it is your primary residence, it's still kind of a business decision in my mind um, until it's your final home and your, your forever home. You're most likely only going to live in there for a period of time. Average time in a home in America is five to seven years. So look at it like that. Look at it a five, seven, 10 year plan, right? And make sure it's a good investment. Is the area growing? Uh, that's important to me. Uh, don't fall in love with the property until it's yours, okay? If you fall in love with the property before it's yours, you'll start to give up stuff you shouldn't have in your negotiation process. So my best advice is um, just look at it as a business decision until you get it under contract, then you can start falling in love with it. So the contract, my strategy with the contract is to give yourself 30 plus days from the closing date. This is going to allow you time to get your mortgage approved, um, get everything planned and, and not stress. And I love to close at the beginning of the month. Um, so my closing is at the beginning of February. And the reason why is the month you close, you have no mortgage payment right? There's a lot of closing costs, down payment, a lot of money coming out of your pockets that month, but there's no mortgage payment. There's also no mortgage payment the month after you close. So my whole goal is to buy the house early in the month, set up that, set up that property, build out all the furniture, artwork, get everything completed before the end of that first month. And by that second month, I'm ready to rock and roll. Okay. So close at the beginning of the month, Submit all documents to your lender as soon as possible. That's that's like most important. I had an approval uh, in less than 24 hours on my loan. I am a loan officer, so I do know exactly what to submit. But uh, if you get with me, I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to get approved. Send me those documents ASAP so we can get you approved quickly. And then that's going to allow for flexibility. And you can move your closing date up if possible. I'm trying to move my closing date up now. Shop for insurance and choose your insurance in your first week. You don't want to be scrambling at the end of the process to try and, you know, tie up loose ends. Go on ahead and knock out everything you know you're going to have to knock out, right? And then 
begin to plan your move in. Now, this is a very important strategy that I use. Now, every lender is going to tell you, do not go make any large purchases. And that is great advice. Okay. But if you listen to my first two videos, you would be well prepared and you would have reserves. And definitely talk with me before you make any large purchases. And I'm going to tell you not to open up any accounts. That's what you definitely don't want to do. Don't open up any accounts. But if your debt to income ratio um, allows you to, then you can. When we say, when lenders say don't go make any large purchases, that's just for the masses and the general public, right? It may not pertain to you exactly. In this situation, it doesn't pertain to me. Um, I have cash, extra cash that I can use to get prepared for this property. So I'm already starting the design, right? Um, the design is very important. How are you going to stand out? You want to make design choices flow with the home, but also stand out compared to your competition, right? Um, you want to price everything out. Build out an online shopping cart to get a good estimate of all costs involved. You can do this with online furniture stores. I get a lot of stuff from Amazon as well, and it makes it really easy to build out that shopping cart. And I will say there is a ton of stuff you have to buy to prepare a home. Um, if you're trying to get it done quickly, it's a lot. So you have to plan and be prepared to execute quickly. Um, and then stick to your budget. That's why pricing everything out is so important. You have to stick to your budget. You want to create a reasonable budget to buy quality items. Cheap stuff breaks and you'll replace it often. So quality doesn't mean designer, but it does mean don't buy some cheap stuff that's just going to break. Okay. Don't go to, you don't have to go designer but you definitely don't want to go cheap. I promise you it will cost you more in the long run. So here's my template. This is the house I'm buying. Um, I love this design. It's a modern house on the lake, right? So most of the houses in this area are not modern. They're older, they're worn down. They look more like wood cabins and stuff like that. And I love those type of properties, don't get me wrong. I think there's something beautiful about each kind of property. But what I noticed is over these last couple of years, you know, as a loan officer, I get to see what everybody wants. And what everybody wants is this open floor plan, this modern type design. And there's not as many of these at the lake. So what I thought I would do to differentiate myself is get a modern type house at the lake. OK, and then I've got this huge backyard right here that I'm super excited about. OK, so I get to design and build out my template right here. We're going to put a big old fire pit by these trees. You can see I've got deer in the backyard. So I'm super pumped about that. We're going to create a fence to fence in the rest of this backyard, but we're going to keep an open part in that fence so we can have deer come in, maybe put a little deer feeder or something back here so the deer come in, people can deer watch. And then back here towards the house on this back porch, I'm going to throw in a hot tub. Uh, what I noticed is most of the listings do not have a hot tub. And what I have seen and everything I've read, everyone likes water. So you want a pool, a hot tub, close to the lake, close to the beach, uh, water cells. Everybody wants to be close to water. So I'm going to throw a hot tub in the back here. We're going to throw a fire pit here. And then we're going to uh, put some of those party lights and string them from the top of these trees to light up this entire backyard. Um, it's going to be really awesome. I'm super pumped about it. So the design. Oh, and then inside the house, we're going to create one of these uh, green walls. But what you'll see, and a lot of people are doing this regular green wall where it's just a grass. We're going to custom make our wall and we're going to use like moss, preserved moss and different moss rocks and cool stuff like that. And my wife and I are going to team up and build this thing. You know, we're just going to watch some YouTube videos. Then we're going to get a custom sign made that says Canyon Lake, Texas. So people can take their little selfies and stuff like that in front of the wall. People love that. Uh, I found this chair. Absolutely love it. It's weird. It stands out. That's what I mean by something stand out. Uh, this one's called Utter Madness. I just really think it's cool. Um, I found it at Exclusive Furniture. It was like 700 bucks a piece, and uh, there was a, um, a sale on them as well. Uh, snatch this rug. It's a little lighter than this um, in person, but um, you can see cool look. Had like some sort of like Mayan Aztec type look to it. I really liked that. Uh, that look of it. We're going to throw that hot tub in the backyard. And then this is our like uh, example of what we're seeing in the landscaping company. 
right? Because I'm already getting, I'm pricing all this out. I know exactly what the hot tub costs. I know exactly what this backyard costs, you know, give or take a thousand bucks, right? But I know what the medium costs to lay down these rocks. I'm going to build a nicer fireplace than this, but I want a pergola with two hanging chairs, right? Um, you want to build out your design so you can start to estimate your cost. It's very important or else you can get stressed out not knowing how much your costs are, right? I have an entire spreadsheet built out and I've already calculated exactly how much my costs are. And so far I'm still under budget, which is absolutely amazing. Even after all this crazy stuff we're buying. So here's your checklist. Um, very important to create this checklist. This is your master list and this is what's gonna show you what you need. And it's big, it is not um, a small task. So you need to really, you need to really plan this out. Living room. You're going to need a couch, chairs, dining table, TV console, TV, rugs, accents, artwork. In the kitchen, you need dishes, silverware, cookware, bar supplies, coffee station, appliances if you need them. In the bathroom, you need mats, towels, toiletries, and cleaning products. The bedrooms are going to need beds, mattress, sheets, comforters, pillows, dresser, nightstand, lamps, artwork. See how it adds up? In the laundry, you'll need a washer and dryer, basket, soaps, backyard, front yard, furniture, landscaping, games, any extra features like a fire pit, hot tub, pool, right? Um, if you can buy a house that already has a hot tub or pool, that's a huge plus. Um, but yeah, you're going to need a lot of stuff. So start to make that list and price it out. And when you start to build out your carts, that's when you'll start to realize maybe we don't need that item. This is a must have. And this is like, eh, we don't really need that. If somebody asks for it, like let's say uh, a, a rice maker or a crock pot for your kitchen, maybe that is something cool, but do you really need those to start? Not necessarily, right? Um, small items in the kitchen, like a cheese grater, you're going to need that. But do you have to have that to start? Maybe not. Maybe get that in month two, three, four, right? So just think about things like that. Um, it adds up quickly, so you want to be prepared. Here's my readiness. I've already started getting ready because I have enough cash. The way I look at it is even if this house fell through on me, there's hundreds of houses available in the same area. I'll just go buy another one. The same stuff apply to the next house I buy. So to me, it doesn't matter. Uh, when you get into real estate investing, short-term rentals, vacation rentals, you also are an investor in the furniture business. So I'm prepared. I got all my stuff ready. Um, I've already even bought all my furniture needed. Um, now, the cool thing about furniture is you just pick the delivery date. If I need to change the delivery date, cool. Um, it, it, it doesn't matter. Now, most people should not do this. If it's your first time, you probably need to wait. Just build out your carts and then execute after you close. Um, definitely talk to me before you go start making a bunch of purchases. Uh, make sure you got the wiggle room. But this isn't my first rodeo. I have plenty of room and I'm not making any bad decisions. I know exactly what I'm doing. Um, so what's going to happen is when I close, um, I'm going to move in that weekend and I will be like 90% ready in like three days. Then all I'm going to be waiting for is my hot tub and my, my hot tub to be installed in my backyard to get built out. And that'll probably happen in the next week or two. Um, the strategy, close early in the month, set up the home in the first two weeks, get professional photos, an absolute must. You don't know how many people I see taking photos with their phone. You're not a photographer, hire a professional. If you are a photographer, still hire a professional. It's better to get somebody that's not attached to the property to get those photos. Uh, be ready to list by month two and execute on your plans. Get expert advice, call me. Here's my phone number, my email. Here's my YouTube where you can find these uh, real estate investing series and tons of videos where I'm constantly giving market updates on where interest rates are headed, what the market's doing and things that are shifting. And um, I'm not tooting my own horn, but I've been spot on and on the money. And um, this is also helping me with trading. I have some trading videos out there. Um, that you can, you can learn how to trade, make some extra money as well. I'm not a financial advisor, so that's not financial advice, uh, but I do very well trading. And, uh, here's a phone number, email address, and my website where you can apply for a mortgage. I would love, love to be your loan officer, but even if I'm not, give me a shout. I'd be happy to help you plan out your next investment. Thank you so much. 
I wish you all the best. Let's go execute on our plans. And please like uh, this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really helps more people learn about this subject. And, um, and, let's, and we can all win in this game. And, um, and be sure to check out my next video. Stay tuned. That's why it's good to uh, subscribe. And you can click that bell for notifications. Um, as this probably going to come out with another video by the end of February, as soon as I have the whole property built out. And that video will be called The Execution where I walk you through exactly how we executed it. And then I'll show you my pricing on the place throughout the year, how I, um, how I do uh, research on seasonality, research my pricing to stay competitive, but also to maximize profitability on the property. And the most fun part about this is you get to use the house. My family and I will enjoy this new lake house for years to come um, and also make money off of it. So it's fantastic. And then later on, I'll show you how to uh, the, the incredible tax breaks uh, from doing this as well. It is unmatched in anything I've ever found. So thank you so much for tuning in. Y'all have a great day and I'll see you soon. Take care.